This is Apollo Control, 120 hours, 7 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 10 is within uh, some 21 seconds of being acquired uh, as it comes around to the visible face of the moon on lunar revolution number 23. Standing by for uh, the first contact. We have the uh, strip photography probably underway at this time. They may be rather busy and uh, will not have a whole lot to say. But, uh, as soon as we do have acquisition uh, and conversation does begin, we'll come up with that. One hour and eleven minutes in this pass until uh, loss of signal. Apollo 10, Houston is standing by. This is Apollo Control. Spacecraft communicator Jack Lausma has uh, called the crew, said he's standing by. We've had no response yet for the crew. We'll continue to leave the air ground circuit live for any possible conversation during this revolution. Several items of information are scheduled to be passed to the crew during this rev, but at the present time they're likely quite busy in conducting the photography task from terminator to terminator. circuit and let it run until the conversation commences, even though there's a great deal of background noise, so that uh, no conversation will be missed. This is Apollo Control. Snoopy, the ascent stage of the lunar module, is now some uh, 36,875 nautical miles outbound from the moon, going toward solar orbit, traveling at uh, some 5,356 feet per second. Flight controllers uh, who have been monitoring the lunar module are packing up at this time. As a matter of fact, the console is vacant now. They're abandoning ship as uh, their job is complete. Background noise has dropped somewhat in the air ground circuit. Come back live with that now to pick up uh, conversation during this 23rd lunar revolution. Ten Houston standing by. Roger Houston, we're taking our vertical stereo photography now. We've just rolled past the subsolar point. Uh, Roger Ten, we copy. And Jack, now that we've got some time to pick out this and really concentrate on this stuff. We're, we're finding all kinds of features in here, and it's mostly been on the tape, and I hope that uh, you'll be able to get the tape and play it there. All right, Roger, while we're talking about the tape, uh, we've been getting uh, on the playback some uh, weak voice and background noise, and uh, we found out uh, on a prior flight that uh, this comes out a lot better if you make sure you have the mic real close to your mouth when you talk into the tape recorder, over. 
Roger's up for all of us. That's affirmative. All of you who are talking to the tape recorder. We're now yawing left 20 degrees. Roger, then. This is Apollo Control. While we're waiting for the crew to complete the uh, strip photography session, we have one local note of interest for newsmen here covering Apollo 10. At 1 p.m. Houston time, Mr. Ray Zedeker of Flight Crew Support Division will cover the lunar exploration timelines for the Apollo 11 mission, scheduled now for July. This will be in the main auditorium at the Manned Spacecraft Center. We return now to monitoring the air ground loop. This is Apollo Control, some five minutes remaining in this uh, vertical stereo sequence. The cutoff time at which they reach uh, 34 degrees east lunar longitude will be at uh, 120 hours, 30 minutes, 18 seconds. A little less than five minutes from now. Likely there will not be uh, too much conversation until after this stereo photography task is completed. Still monitoring air ground live. All right. Houston, Apollo 10, uh, we've just passed over Mount Maryland and the crater Weatherford. Over. Roger, we copy. Going right 20 degrees to pick up the landing site to now. Roger, 10. And we're right on top of a masculine at this time. Roger, 10. Over masculine B now. Apollo 10, Houston, say again, please. Hi, Roger. We're just uh, past masculine B, and I'm right to looking straight down at Sidewinder Reel and coming up uh, to the head of uh, Diamondback Reel. Uh, Roger, we're following you. CVD's on the left. On my left as we go backwards. And there's Fay Rich. Uh, Roger, 10, and uh, we observe you're liable to get sunlight on the windows here pretty soon. Roger. Picking up US-1 on the right. Roger. Roger, Gino, uh, Langrenus, and uh, you have to speak up a little louder, please. And I see Crater 133 with that little crater we talked about on the right of it for tracking. Roger. We have a beautiful panoramic view looking back uh, from Sabine and Ritter over the landing site back to masculine A and B and then on over. Uh, Past North Maryland. All right, Tom. Tell you later on today, and we'll talk about it when we have a chance for a rev. We may just go do a vertical strip roll 90 degrees so you can get a high gate and we'll shoot the tube on it because I know it'll pick it up and you can pick out all these features. Over. All right, Roger, Tom. We'll start thinking about that. Also, you might uh, tell Jack that we couldn't have a better crater named after the dream. Uh, because we're looking at it now back uh, from Sabine and Ritter and the boulders that have been kicked out of it on the uh, outside slope nearly look like a forest of pine trees there's so many big black boulders there uh, say again the name of that Tom it's really spotted the countryside with them 
That's what we codenamed it, Herr Schmidt. All right, Roger. He says thanks, but it's, I spelled the name wrong. Well, we were in a hurry anyway. We didn't have too much time to worry about details. It looks just like a scattered, uh, about the same density, you know, as pine trees up on a mountain ridge. That's about what these big black boulders look like. Roger. We're now in an area that is really noticeably marked by volcanic activities. We have all types of, uh, of, 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 of lumps here, and you can really see there's just thousands of volcanoes here. Just a tremendous volcanic field at this time. Over. Roger. Lots of volcanic mounds. Uh, Roger, that makes the geologist happy. I've got one interesting sight here. It looks like a, it's probably too dark to take a picture, but you can see where you had a big impact crater with the ramped edge, and it looks like a stream of volcanic material has run over into it. All right, Roger, Tom. If uh, you went to 1 125th on the Hasselblad, you might get it. to uh, fly the next vertical strip photography, uh, namely in Rev uh, 31 in the same attitude, by, then we can give you the TV, or... Okay, 
Charlie Papa one. One two one. Three niner. Four niner. One two one. Four two. Four niner. Three balls. Zero five zero. Three balls. North. One three miles. One one four zero. Charlie Papa two. One two one. Five five. One zero. One two one. Five six. Five two. Three balls. Two balls eight. Three balls. North. Zero five. Zero four. Four zero. Fox one. One two two. Zero seven. Five five. One two two. One zero. Zero six. Three balls. Three two six. Three balls. North. One zero. Zero nine. Four one. Number one three zero. One two two. Two niner. Zero three. One two two. Three zero. Three seven. Three balls. Two six five. Three balls. North at one three. One two. Four zero. Go ahead, and I've got a maneuver pad after that. Roger, Charlie Papa one. One two one three nine four nine. One two one four two four nine. All balls zero five zero. All balls. North thirteen eleven and forty. Charlie Papa two. I missed T one. Over. Roger on Charlie Papa two. We have one two one five five and one zero. And we want to uh, confirm the nautical miles on Charlie Papa one as being thirteen one three over. Proceed, uh, let's lock up with a high gain, over. Okay, we're still maneuvering, stand by. Roger. 
Hello, Houston. This is 10. Uh, we're in uh, accept and poo and ready for your update, ready for your pad. Uh, Roger, 10. Uh, reading you loud and clear now. Uh, the uplink's coming up, and here's the pad. TEI 24. SPS GNN. 36818 minus 061 plus 076 123 Plus zero zero six eight two. Roll is NA, pitch is zero six six. The rest is NA. Your allage is two jets for fourteen seconds, over. Okay, Jack, I got TI twenty four SPS GNN three six eight one eight minus zero six one plus zero seven six. One two three four zero five two three three plus three zero four four three plus zero zero one three one. Plus zero zero six eight two NA and pitch is zero six six. The rest is NA two jet for fourteen seconds. That's affirmative. Apollo ten Houston, the uplink is complete. Computer is yours. You can go to block. And uh, we noted that on the last pass during the strip photography, uh, you were uh, rolled one hundred and eighty degrees different than what we expected you to be. And we'd uh, like to ask you a couple of questions about uh, the laminate band yesterday and the uh, limb pressurization when you have an opportunity to discuss it over. Go ahead, Jack. Okay, on the uh, S-band communications uh, around the DOI period, uh, do you have anything uh, significant to report? Uh, having lost comp for about uh, 20 minutes on the high gain there, we were uh, a little concerned as to what the problem might be. Uh, can you discuss that? No, I noticed we were having uh, lockout uh, or lockout problems as we uh, went low across the landing site. It appeared uh, that it occurred right at our low time, and the, uh, the S-band uh, didn't track, uh, didn't follow as we came across the landing site, and I went to Omni's uh, hoping without having too much time to play with it. And then a uh, period of time after that, I played with the S-Band again and was able to acquire you and lock on. That's all I can really say, but it did occur somewhere near the low part of our trajectory. Uh, Roger, we understand. Uh, another question is uh, regarding the lamp pressurization. We noted that uh, right after you pickled uh, Snoopy off uh, Charlie there, that uh, the limb cabin pressurization went down. Do you, uh, did you observe anything or uh, note anything unusual about that, or? Jack, uh, he moved away with a blast, and the next thing uh, we had in our eyes was sunlight right through the windows, and we couldn't see a thing. I do know that both dump valves were in auto, however. Uh, we had a lot, of, uh, a lot of garbage around after the blast uh, from the uh, pyros, but other than that, uh, Tom has seen something else. I was looking out the center hatch window, and uh, as you know, the tunnel, we couldn't get the tunnel depressurized, and when we fired those pyros, some more insulation blew out, and I just saw Snoopy disappear in a big snowstorm going straight up into the sun, and that was all. Over. All right, Roger, thank you. And uh, the last time we saw Snoopy down here, he was uh, 37,000 miles going straight up from the moon at 5,400 feet per second, and thank you for your comments. Over. Okay, and the look, okay, I guess I got right ahead. We've made some, some changes in here on that roll. All right, Roger, we noticed. And the way that the times have changed, but they didn't, I'm sorry about that, but it doesn't seem to, we didn't get any shafting or anything on our windows at all until right at the last when we hit the terminator. All right, Roger, that was the only thing we were concerned about. Yeah, I don't think it'll, no, uh, there, was no there was no shafting at all on the windows. And it looked like we were giving our comments, and uh, I don't think we had any problem at all. Uh, Roger, uh, thank you for the comments. They're good, and I uh, understand we'll have this attitude for Rev 31.
Dispatch, Pilot 10 Houston. Uh, we'd like you to check uh, the situation with fuel cell 1. Ensure that your fuel cell 1 pumps AC circuit breaker and panel 226 is closed. And that your fuel cell number 1 AC 1 is closed. Our correction is the AC 1. Good copy, 10.
This is Apollo Control. We've had loss of signal from Apollo 10 as it went around behind the moon on the uh, 23rd revolution. Our next acquisition of signal will be at uh, 122 hours, 6 minutes ground elapsed time, some 45 minutes and 40 seconds from now. Apparently one of the uh, three Apollo fuel cells is acting up somewhat and uh, by shifting the switch positions in the spacecraft uh, powering the main buses and the power distribution system they're getting around this slight anomaly. On the next revolu uh, revolution around the moon uh, they'll be conducting some orbital navigation exercises. Landmark tracking and at uh, 121 hours 21 minutes ground elapsed time this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control. At 122 hours, 5 minutes ground elapsed time. We're less than a minute away from acquisition here as Apollo 10 comes around from behind the moon on revolution number 24. This uh, next loss of signal will be some hour and 12 minutes from now at uh, 123 hours and 18 minutes. standing by for a resumption of communications here as the spacecraft comes around on this rev. Crew at the present time is uh, tracking various lunar landmarks in uh, orbital, lunar orbital navigation experiments. Should have acquisition of signal at the present time. Standing by here for first call from the spacecraft or from the ground to Apollo 10. Apollo 10, Houston, standing by. Roger, we're in the middle of a landmark track. Uh, Roger, and uh, we've uh, cranked up a plan of attack on the fuel cell. Okay, can you hold off for just a couple of minutes and be right with you. Apollo Control here crew is still rather busy in the landmark tracking exercise and uh, a few moments ago asked spacecraft communicator Jack Lausma for a few more minutes to complete uh, this particular run before they picked up with the discussion. We'll leave the circuit up though and pick up the conversation when it does resume. Okay, Tom, here's our uh, plan of attack in a fuel cell. First, we're going to look at the fuel cell temperatures for a little while. And uh, after we've done that, we're going to uh, put it back online to uh, look at the temperatures it generates versus its loading. And uh, then we're going to work up a fuel cell purge. We've got uh, 25 hours of hydrogen purging available. Looks like we've lost the pump package on fuel cell one. But uh, we're going to maintain the temperatures of the, of the fuel cell by purging it, and then we'll use the cell only for burns, etc. At the present time, we're uh, we're not proposing any changes in the flight plan, and uh, we expect when it goes back online, it'll uh, go on both main A and main B. 
And uh, so at this time, uh, we're working up a purge cycle and looking at your fuel cell, over. control here. 53 minutes remaining until loss of signal on this 24th lunar revolution. Continuing to stand by for resumption of communications between Apollo 10 and the ground. Houston, Apollo 10, we've just finished tracking landmark 130. Hello, Houston, Apollo 10. Apollo 10, Houston, go ahead. All right, sir, we've just finished uh, Landmark 130. We've got them all in. Ah, very good. We have uh, ginned up a uh, fuel cell one plan, over. Okay, stand by. Houston, uh, 10, you got the date off 130. Houston, say again, please. Roger, do you have the date off 130 yet? Stand by. That's affirmative, uh, 10. We've got the date off 130 now. Okay, when we're in real time, I'll just hold on. I understand this is the one that's really important, so I can hang on to this until you give me a go. Uh, Roger, that's fine. We got it now. Go ahead, Houston, and turn with your cell plane. Okay, our fuel cell plan is uh, relatively simple. We're just going to leave it offline, uh, open circuit, and uh, we want you to turn the uh, fuel cell one inline heaters off, and then monitor the skin temperature. <coughs> monitor the temperature to stay between uh, 390 and 410, cycling the inline heaters on and off to maintain 390 to 410. This will keep our water production to a minimum, uh, reducing our requirement to purge. And we may be able to go as long as 50 hours in this manner without purging. Uh, during the day, we'll work out uh, procedures to use during your sleep period on, uh, on skin temperature, over. OK, Jack, uh, you must have been reading the same malfunction procedures I, I was. The fuel cell heater has been off, uh, well, ever since we uh, went through LOS. I've got a question on that heater. Uh, it's an auto heater which recycles uh, somewhere around 380, 390 degrees. Uh, would you just want me to turn it to auto position uh, if it starts dropping? Is that correct? Uh, negative 10. 
We, we want you to uh, manually keep the temperature between 390 and 410 by cycling the heater switch over. What are you reading on the heater on the skin temperature right now? Stand by. Uh, right now we're reading a skin tem temperature of a 4, 2, 3, 10. Okay, I'm reading about uh, 4, 30, I guess, and it's been pretty stable. I'll turn the heater on, uh, say, down around uh, 390 and uh, keep between 390 and 410. Roger. And whenever you got some time there, uh, we'd like to uh, update your state vector and uh, pass you some pads. Okay, we're in accept. Roger, Tim. Okay, uh, I'm ready to copy your pad, and uh, I guess I got another question. Uh, uh, you might be picking up some uh, words and things we can uh, pull off the line here pretty quick in case we do get some undervolting problems uh, while we're behind the backside, and I'm ready to copy your pad. All right, Roger, we're working on that, and we'll give you the word. I have a uh, map update pad. Rev 25, 1, 2, 3, 1, 8, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 9er. Whoa there. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold over. Hey. Jack, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought you meant a pad. Wait, we got to get the right book out here. Hold it. Start over again. All right, Roger. I have a maneuver pad. Go ahead with Red 25 now. Okay, RAF 25, 1, 2, 3, 1, 8, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 9, 3, 6, 1, 2, 4, 0, 4, 2, 1, Sunrise, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 4, Sunset, 1, 2, 4, Four four three nine er over. Roger. One two three one eight three two one two three two nine three six one two four zero one four two one two three three two one four one two four four three nine. Rev twenty five. All right, Roger. I want you to check the AOS to be one two four zero four two one. Sunset one two four. Four four three nine. Roger, sir. Okay, I've got a landmark tracking pad. Go ahead. Okay, Charlie Papa one. One two three three eight one four. One two three four one one three. Three balls. Zero five one. Three balls. North. One three miles. One two four one. Charlie Papa two. One two three. Five three. Three five. One two three. Five five. One seven. Three balls. Zero zero seven. Three balls. North. Zero five. Zero four. Four two. Foxtrot one. One two four. Zero six. Two zero. One two four. Zero eight. Three zero. Three balls. Three two niner. Three balls. North. One zero. One zero. Four zero. Landmark one three zero. One two four. Two seven. Two eight. One two four. Two niner. Zero zero. Three balls. Two six five. 
Three balls. North at 1-2. One, 1-2, two. One, two, four, one. Give me a read back and tell me when you're ready for a maneuver, Pat. Over. Roger. CB1. One, two, three, three, eight, one, four. One, two, three, four, one, one, three. All balls, zero, five, one, all balls. North, one, three, one, two, four, one. CP2, one, two, three, five, three, three, five. One, two, three, five, five, one, seven. All balls, zero, zero, seven, all balls. North, zero, five, zero, four, four, two. F1, 124-0620. All balls, 329, all balls. North, 10, 10, 40. 130, 124-2728. 124-2900. All balls, 265, all balls. North, 12, 12, 41. I read back correct. Ready for the pass. Okay, this is TEI number 25. SPS GNN. 36750. Minus 061. Plus zero seven five one two five four zero zero three eight one plus three one zero zero eight plus zero zero one one two plus zero one one five four roll is in a Pitch is zero six four, and the rest is NA. Your haulage is two jets for fourteen seconds. Over. Roger, TEI twenty five FTS two N three six seven five zero minus zero six one plus zero seven five one two five four zero zero three eight one plus three one zero zero eight. Plus zero zero one one two plus zero one one five four. Roll is at a pitch zero six four and two jets for fourteen seconds. Roger, that's a good read back, and uh, we're finished with our uplink. The computer is yours. Go to block over. Okay, work block. Houston, this is Ken. That F one was right near the sub solar point. Boy, I really had a lot of trouble trying to figure out uh, trend. You can see it okay in the telescope, but when you transfer from the telescope to the section, it just vanishes. Uh, Roger, uh, 10. What target was that? F1. Roger, F1. CP2 is sort of that way, too. Roger. Okay, used to Apollo 10, I'm going to pitch around to go to zero nine two inertia. Roger, 10. It doesn't vanish, it's there, but you just can't see it. That's, that sounds kind of funny. It's, it's got the uh, landmark in there, landmark line of sight, and a lunar line of sight in there, all in one in the section. you got two different images, and it's so bright, it's, it's this doesn't, uh, unless it has a dark feature in it, which most of these places don't, it just isn't recognizable. I uh, Roger 10, understand that it's uh, hard to see because it's bright as opposed to its size. Is that affirmative? That's correct. I just don't get any definition. It's a bright blob down there. Bunch of bright bombs down there. Roger, copy. Apollo 10, Houston, uh, John, where we have a target that uh, puts too bright in a section, uh, we just recommend uh, finding it in the telescope.
Okay, Houston Apollo 10, just keep us informed because this landmark tracking is real important. We get this bear wired down, and we've already got one set, and we're going to continue on here, and we'll monitor the cell, and naturally, if the thing really starts to go out on us, we know what the mission rule is on it. Uh, but right now, we plan to continue on and primarily concentrate on the landmark uh, tracking. We've shot so much photography, we're about out of color film. We're saving a little bit for the way back. And we still have some black and white to go, and we'll, get, we'll do some of that. But the main thing we're going to concentrate on now is uh, the landmark tracking. Over. All right, Roger, Tom. Uh, we see no reason to change your uh, plan of attack. And we have a uh, change to... Uh, Landmark tracking update pad, uh, Foxtrot 1. Over. Okay, stand by, I'll copy it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, on Rev 25, uh, target uh, Foxtrot 1. The T2 time should be changed. T2 should be 124-0803. Okay, I got 03 Vice 30. Roger, that's affirmative, and uh, so far uh, all the tracking data looks real good. Uh, Roger, thank you. You got a pretty good way to evaluate it in real time there, over? That's affirmative. I didn't get all the marks on uh, one of those places because uh, I lost it in the sextant. Roger, we copy, 10. I forget, it's one of the CPs back there, not one, CP2. Is one. Uh, Roger, uh, we detected that on CP2, but uh, 130 is a real important one, and that's coming through real good. Roger, Apollo 10, Houston, uh, we have a revision to the way in which we'd like you to uh, maintain temperature in the cryo tanks, over. Okay, Jack, go ahead. Uh, Roger, instead of using your uh, heaters to maintain the temperature in the cryo tanks, uh, use your fans manually, over. Okay, use the fans to maintain the pressure in the cryo tanks, right? Is that correct? Use the fans to maintain the temperature in the cryo tanks. This this will be a correction, correction pressure. This will uh, require less current and uh, allow finer control. Over. Very good. Thank you. Those are kind of good words I really wanted. Thank you very much. Roger. We'll try to think up some more. Thank you. Apollo 10, Houston, uh, you're going around the corner in about a minute and a half, but your AOS is 124.04, and uh, we'd like you to check and make sure the VHF is all off. Over. 124.04, we'll check. Yeah, Jack, I checked all the VHF switches are all off. Oh, Roger, thank you. This is Apollo Control at 124 hours, 31 minutes. There has been very little air ground conversation during the change of shift news conference. The crew has been busy with the landmark tracking tasks. We'll play the tape uh, of the conversation that has taken place and then stay up live through the remainder of this pass. We have uh, about 44 minutes of acquisition time left. Hello, Apollo 10, the Houston, we're standing by, over. Uh, Roger, Apollo 10, this is Houston, we're doing landmark tracking, and we're uh, coming up to the landmark airport. Uh, Roger, 10, uh, good afternoon, uh, you guys. Uh, wanted to congratulate you on a great day yesterday. Didn't get a chance to do it yesterday. It's a beautiful show. Okay, thanks much, Charlie. Uh, you're on the ground, really keep to coordinate those vehicles together. You must have a heck of a load on your shoulders, but uh, support was fantastic. We sure appreciate it. Uh, we've uh, had a lot of fun. Uh, thank you, Mike. Attention, Dad. Uh, say again, John. Yeah, I can feel it. I can feel the tension down there all the way up here. 
We were a little tight at times. You guys did a great job. Let you get back to work now, Al. tape and we're live now. Hello, Houston, Apollo 10. Uh, go ahead, 10, over. I'm going to... Okay, I'm going to pitch around to the 092 attitude and we'll get you some high game then, over. Uh, Roger, 10. Houston, this is 10. Uh, summary, uh, the last four landmarks, BP-1. I'm not sure, as reviewing it in my mind, whether I tracked the same CP1 on the first one as I did on the second one. CP2, I'm sure I've got the right one. F1, I'm sure is the right one, and 130, I'm sure is right. All right, John, we copy. Uh, maybe not sure on uh, CP1, the rest of the same. Yeah, and CP2, I did with a sextant. CP-1 and 2 were with a sextant, F-1 was with a telescope, 130 was with a sextant, and I'm going back to uh, the telescope on CP-1. Uh, Roger. Probably CP-2. Uh, Roger, uh, we copy, John. Uh, next rev, you're going to try the telescope on uh, CP-1, 2, and F-1, and use the sextant on 130. Roger, and I may, I may not... Do that. Depends on whether I can identify it in the section or not once I get it in the scope. Now, Roger, we copy. How's the old eyeball holding out? Eyeball's okay. I just keep, I just keep, uh, it's a question of wash out and things like that. Uh, at different inclination angles, when you're passing over it, these little things look different. Especially in that section where you've got these two landmark line of sights uh, fight lines of sights to sort of in competition with each other. Hi, Roger. 130's been uh, good, though. 130's been real good. Uh, Roger. Thanks a lot, Al. About 10, uh, Houston, uh, about uh, 15 minutes before LOS, uh, we'll have a little critique uh, when we look at the data, and uh, we'll talk to you a little bit more then about it. Over. Roger. Hello, uh, 10 uh, Houston. We'd like you to go to Poo and Accept. Uh, we got a state vector for you. Over. Here and Accept. Go. All uh, right, Roger. And uh, 10, uh, if you're ready to copy now, we got a, a TEI 26 pad for you. SPS GNN, NA down to uh, now 33. And we got uh, 1, 2, 7, 3, 9er, 2, 0, 0, 0, uh, 981, plus 3, 1, 6, 3, 8, plus 2 balls, 5, 6, 0, plus 0, 1, 6, 0, 1. Pitch angle is zero six two, and it's two jet ullage for fourteen seconds. Over. Charlie, we lost you. I picked you up at nine eighty one. You'll have to go up uh, through uh, up to nine eighty one again. All right, Roger, uh, Dan. Why don't we hold off till we get the high gain, uh, and we'll be back with you. Over. Okay, fine.
Yeah, Charlie, we got your high gain now. And Uh, right, Stan, uh, you copy now, Gene? Over. Okay, we were NA down to, uh, uh, noun 33. Noun 33 is 127 three niner two zero 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 plus three one six three eight plus zero zero five six zero plus zero one six zero one and a zero six two on a pitch angle two jet ollies for 14 seconds over okay i got ti 26 sps gnn uh now 47 48 or na 33 is one two seven three nine or two zero 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 plus three one six three eight plus zero zero five six zero plus zero one six zero one pitch is zero six two and it's two jet for 14 seconds uh roger uh, that's a good read back uh 10 and uh we have a uh, rev 26 uh updates for you uh tracking and the uh map update if you're ready to copy that now okay go ahead charlie Okay, uh, we got the state vector in uh, 10. Uh, you can uh, go back to block. Okay, the map update for Rev 26 coming at you. 1, 1252800. 1, Okay, for the uh, CP1, starting with T1, 125-36-38, North of track, 1-4. One, two, four, one. Going to CP2 now. And starting with T1. One, two, five, five, two, zero, zero. One, two, five, five, three, four, two. Zero, 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 seven, zero, zero, zero. North of track, zero, five, zero, four, four, three. You with me? Go here, Charlie. Okay, F1, T1 time. One, two, six, zero, four, Four six one two six zero six two nine or zero 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 three three zero 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 north of track one zero one four four one one thirty Okay, T1 for 130 is 126 2553. 126 2725. 000 267 000. North 12 12. Four zero, and that's all the pad. Standing by for your read back. Okay, Rev twenty six is one two five one six four one one two five two eight zero zero one two six zero two five one. CP one is one two five three six three eight one two five three nine or three eight. Zero 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 five two and zero 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 north one 
That's a good read back, uh, Gino. Out. Okay, Charlie. From what we saw a little while ago, it looks like the sun might be shining down there. Well, we got a big uh, growler uh, coming up uh, just uh, north of the uh, side here. Uh, since I came in, it might be raining out there. Okay, that was with the naked eye from a quarter million miles away. Uh, your friendly geologist, Jack, uh, just advised me that he just came in and it's uh, summer has uh, really arrived at Houston and uh, it, uh, it's clear and clear and hot. Very good. Hello, Houston Apollo 10. Go ahead, 10, over. Okay, we're looking ahead here. We got this rev of landmark tracking and it calls for a TV pass. And uh, I'll tell you right, uh, I'd like to show you this moonscape out here. It's really, uh, we think we've got some definition of the color out there about being in a shade of light brown and light uh, tan and it's gray right near the sunset. An early sunrise, and also the new craters look like a gypsy and more of a whitish chalky things. But after 1.30, there's not much light left. The ideal thing would be maybe right near the end of the rest period, just give you a big panoramic sweep coming in through there. How would that be, over? Uh, Roger, uh, that sounds good to us, Ken. We understand that you would like to skip the uh, regular uh, TV at uh, 1 Cynic 2620 and uh, then schedule it uh, in at the end of the uh, rest period. Over. Yeah, that's right. By the time we do that, you have to link us to State Vector. John does an IMU, and we come around and do one more rev of landmark tracking. It's pretty crowded. Plus, I uh, don't think we'd have too much to show you. we got to get squared away from the landmark tracking again. but. Uh, the way that the sun is now, out on that uh, uh, the, the, the Maria area there and everything, it is really beautiful. And uh, I think it would be lots better if you could figure out an angle where we could get high gain and we could be looking backwards as we progress forwards, look back, kind of show you the whole zone. Or, or we could go go forward so we could get, get a high gain angle during our rest period. We could take about 15 to 20 minutes in there and without any problem and show it to you. Over. Uh, Roger, Ken, uh, we can uh, come up with that for you. Do you want us to uh, schedule this at the beginning of the rest period or right at the end, uh, Tom? Stay by, Charlie. It looks like to me, uh, Ken, it looks like to me the best time would probably be at the end of the rest period. Uh, if you begin your rest period, you're already in darkness, uh, starting rev uh, 28. Uh, we could probably do it at the end of, uh, at the end of your rest period. Uh, or at about 1.31, uh, uh, 30 of thereabouts, over. Yeah, I, I, we're just looking ahead here, and this looks real good, then, Charlie. But in other words, when we come around uh, at about 1.31, uh, you know, say 30 or so, give us the, the angles, and we've got some beautiful panoramic views. If we could be looking out obliquely ahead down at about, oh, 15 to 20 degrees, and uh, looking ahead with the sun to our back there, you should get a fantastic uh, uh, view of the whole Maria area. It's really beautiful, and we could show that on TV. At least uh, so far, the colors have been coming through good. And show you what we mean by color up here, over. Uh, Roger, would you like to combine it with the oblique strip photography of landing site three, over? Yeah, well, that'd be okay. Be fine. Uh, Roger, uh, I think we're pretty well squared away on that, uh, Tom. Uh, we'll uh, give you some, uh, we'll look at it for a little bit longer. 
and uh, we can come up with a, an attitude for eye gain and TV and uh, be, allow you to get your oblique strip in there, and we'll have it for you in a, in a little while. Over. Okay, thank you, Charlie. Hello, uh, Paula 10, uh, Houston, over. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Tom, we got a little uh, critique uh, on your Rev 25 tracking uh, for John. On uh, site 130, it appeared that he started about uh, 50 seconds early. Uh, the spacing was good, but the geometry was not quite as good as uh, we'd like it. Uh, uh, and uh, if we could uh, just uh, move that up 50 seconds, uh, uh, we'd appreciate it. Uh, we re the, the as I I'll repeat though that. Go ahead, John. Oh, well, John, we're listening for you. John's busy. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, the uh, the spacing was real good on the marks, but uh, uh, the uh, the geometry wasn't quite as good as they liked it. So uh, uh, they just wanted to pass on that remark. On F1, uh, the mark spacing was uh, excellent. And uh, we started right on time, but we only got uh, four marks uh, recorded, and it appeared that uh, we were in uh, just uh, uh, standby. Uh, Roger. It appeared that on F1 that uh, we initially were just in attitude hole, and and we uh, ran at ran out of trunnion before we got uh, all the marks in, but the spacing was real good. Over. Okay. Okay, we started uh, Houston. We started the, the marks on 1:30, right on the time that we thought, right on the time sync that you passed up to us. Over. Uh, the standby one. Uh, Ten, uh, Houston. Uh, the uh, experts here were saying that uh, the T2 time, the mark should be started about uh, 30 to 40 seconds after the T2 time. Over. Okay, all righty. We'll start up 30 to 40 seconds after T2. T uh, Roger. And, uh, Tom, we're going to have Goldstone up for you on the TV at about uh, 1.32, and we'll have the 210 dish, and uh, it looks like uh, we're going to be in good shape for the obliques and the uh, and the TV. And uh, we'll get all the info up to you uh, next rev. Over. Okay, sounds real great, Charlie. Thank you. Roger, and uh, we got uh, 10 minutes to uh, LOS. Uh, we'll see you uh, next rev uh, at uh, 126.02. Uh, and uh, we're looking good going over the hill. Uh, the fuel cell, uh, everything's looking good. Over. Okay, real fine. Thanks a lot, Charlie. <laughs> and uh, Houston, now this is 10 on that uh, TV pass and like the obliques. If we could get into some attitude, uh, or he wouldn't have to be upside down like maybe we'd be yawed right or pitched and looking out the side window over. All right, just stand by on that one, uh, Tom, over. Okay. Hello, uh, 10, uh, Houston, uh, we have your request. Uh, and we'll uh, work it out uh, on the back side, and uh, we'll have it for you next uh, AOS, over. Okay, real fine, Charlie. And Thanks a lot. It looks like uh, the old orbit here is being torqued around, just like predicted. Apache's getting higher and Perigee's getting lower. Over. Yeah, old well, uh, uh, Fido's have been uh, showing me what the uh, potential uh, does to you guys, and it's a really weird-looking uh, thing there. Uh, it's as predicted, though. I guess uh, our model. Go, oh, go ahead. No, I'm just going to say, yeah, we, we, we've been noticing we expected it, but. Uh, Right there, we're at a 67.3 by 54.7. Looks like total energy is conserved, but uh, it's really changing the upside there. Over. Uh, Roger, that's uh, just about what we have you in. Uh, we agree with all those comments. Over. Roger. Hello, uh, 10 Houston, uh, two minutes to LOS. Uh, you're looking great going over the hill. Over. Okay, Charlie, thanks a lot.
This is Apollo Control at 125 hours, 16 minutes. We've lost the signal from Apollo 10. We're showing an orbit here now of 67.3 by 54.4 nautical miles. The previous revolution we were reading 67.1 by 54.7. This was a, a busy pass as far as the crew was concerned, uh, doing a lot of landmark tracking. We updated the crew on times and attitudes for uh, control points and landmarks in uh, upcoming revolutions. And as you heard the discussion, the regularly scheduled TV uh, pass which had been scheduled for uh, an elapsed time of 126 hours and 20 minutes has been scrubbed and in its place will be a television pass uh, beginning at Goldstone acquisition at 132 hours at that time we'll be in revolution number 29 we have acquisition again of Apollo 10 at 126 hours, 2 minutes, 51 seconds. This is Mission Control, Houston.